Hey guys, Half Slab Bacon here with a new melon farm for 1.11 using the brand new observer block. Now this farm I've clocked in at just shy of three stacks an hour for this small footprint and I am going to be looking at making a even more compact uh, tileable design to go upwards in the future for a nice big tower. But this individual one's just meant for a nice display like this, say inside of your base, hidden in the wall. So the mechanic works very simply based on using the observers and a combination of pistons to update one another so that as soon as a melon grows in the area, it updates and we get it beautiful, broken, nice and quick. Now I have updated tick speed here a little bit to show you. So we're just gonna go ahead and set that back to standard and let's get on with how to build it. So the first thing we're gonna do is once you've dug into the wall or you know, build up around it, whatever your pleasure is, we're going to want to place our redstone blocks down and then we're going to want to go out as far as we can on either side. Now for the sake of simplicity's sake I position mine to the front so you can see what kind of drops I got. Now this is over letting it run for a couple hours of testing at normal tick speed and that's it. So here we go with the rest. Nice and simple. As far out as we can get. That's it. That's all. Now for the one we're going to stop at, we'll run this one out the back. Just assuming that uh, you're maybe going to want to say hide this and have it go into a item sorting system or that type of thing. So the last one on this side that doesn't power, we're just gonna hide a redstone torch underneath and a block. Um, if you were looking to tower this, you could just use a lever for that and so on and so forth. So from there, we're just gonna loop it all the way around till we get to this section where it doesn't power. And from there, we're actually gonna bring it this way and as I said as I show you this time we will empty this out at the back simply for the sake of assuming that you likely are gonna run it into a dropper tower or something of that sort so we'll just put a chest here for demonstration purposes and what we're going to want is we're going to want a hopper going into that and then we're going to want a powered rail here. Now we're going to knock out some blocks here just to show you how to build our cell for this. So from there we're going to want a comparator into a block And then we're going to go into a torch, into another block, and then here you can use a comparator or a repeater. I'm going to use the comparator simply because I have it out and it's easier that way. Now from here you can fill this in. I'm going to put glass just so it's easy for you guys to visualize down there and then of course we're gonna put a block to stop our hopper now from here the next stage is we're gonna want to build a wall along back you can use any block you'd like uh, I'm gonna go with glass just so it's easier for you guys to see although I used iron the display there And then we're going to come along like so. 
And then the next part, we're going to want this wall too wide. And on this section here, you're going to want to glass off or use your iron blocks or whatever the side. And same thing here, this will be the edges of your farm. Now from here, we are going to want a cross design. So one out, two out, one out, two out, one out, two out, one out, two out, and so on, all towards the end. Now, from here comes the fun part. We're going to want our pistons. So we're going to place pistons on these glass blocks facing where we have the holes, like so. Not that one. Silly, you don't want to put a piston there. That's where we're putting our dirt. So we're going to want to get our pistons like so. Next, we're going to take our brand new shiny observer block that we've come to love and we're going to place it facing upwards so that it's detecting what is going on above the piston like so. And I'm not sure why the sun's going down because I'm pretty sure I set the day cycle to false. So we'll just go like that real quick. Sorry about that guys. Now, from here, we're actually going to want to put more observer blocks, only this time we're going to have them face directly down. So they're detecting the area right where the piston is. So we're going to want to go in like so, and you're going to want to do this in this particular order. Otherwise, you're going to end up breaking a ton of blocks to try and fit these in after the fact. From there, we're almost done. To complete the, the circuit, all we need to do now is actually come back in here and those ones that we just put there, we're placing pistons on top. Now these pistons, when the melon is detected, are going to push forward onto this one, which is then going to power the one underneath. Oops, and we missed one. This no good. Let's get that in there. And cause them to update and push our tiny little melon around. Now you're going to want to bring your wall up around these because we're actually going to put the water to hydrate our crops back in here. And incidentally, the water back in here is also what's going to keep this farm lossless because it is going to counteract the current bug we have with the translocation with the pistons. If you're familiar with that, this is the solution. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it. Next, we're gonna wanna grab our glowstone and our farming goods so that we can get this farm started. Let's get this party started. So from here, measuring out from that glass we put underneath, we're just going to fill the area in with dirt. And then of course, we're going to place glowstone up top so that we can light our farm up. Now we're actually going to go in back and we're going to fill this area up 
with water. And the reason we're going two layers high is what's going to happen is due to that translocation bug, when it the piston does pull any of the melons back into this area, the water is going to take the items and drop it down on top of those glass blocks, which is going to allow our hopper minecart to pick them up. So from there, now that our farm is hydrated, we can start to hoe it up. You don't need to hoe all of them. I don't know why I do, really. We just need to hoe the ones we're actually putting our melon and pumpkins on. And now you can go in whatever order you want, but the most important thing here is in each one of these star patterns, you alternate. So away from the furthest piston back, I'm gonna go melon, pumpkin, and then I'm gonna go melon, I'm gonna go pumpkin, I'm gonna go melon, I'm gonna go pumpkin, I'm going to go melon, pumpkin, and finally melon. And you could go all one or the other if you want, the reason I am alternating here is because of the way the growth mechanics work. Uh, with a melon here and a pumpkin here, they will both compete with the growth update algorithm for this block, and um, neither one will get cancelled out. Whichever one grows first is going to get that block if they take it. However, if they were both melons, um, this one trying to get this one at the same time as this one would actually cancel one of the two out. So we would have much less growth, a far slower growth rate. So by alternating, we maximize the efficiency because they detect in all four directions. Uh, if we really wanted, we could put a glass block here or a grass block here as well and just put the glass over top of it and that would increase the efficiency a little bit more but i prefer the way this looks having the glass front for display so i take three out of four to lose a bit of the efficiency it's still far more efficient than most of the designs and being that we're using completely independent buds this farm is extremely efficient and lag free unlike some of our old 1.8 1.9 designs where we had to have an entire row going off at a time or setting dozens of pistons off on a clock the nice thing about this design is it is only going to go off when absolutely necessary each piston will function independently so once you've walled it off you're good to go you can put a roof on top you can stack this just keep in mind that pistons will receive bud power from this block space up here so you would have to go one more block up due to powering the rails which is why I'm going to come up with an alternate design for stacking. That's just more of an in the wall base design to get you started. Okay, so from here, all we need to do is get our mine card in and we're pretty much good to go. Now on that, we can simply come over here and pop those out temporarily. Get our mine cart with the hopper down it will continue to go back and forth until it's loading and unloading at which point it will stop and now we can bump our random tick speed up let's go to say 200 and we should see the farm in action as you can see it's each one is operating completely independently they're breaking them and the hopper minecart is able to go along and pick them up as it sees fit. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I did test and even at a tick speed of 500, which is way faster than you would ever run, uh, the hopper minecart is able to keep up so it is completely lossless. 
So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you do build this in your world and enjoy all the melons and pumpkins. Look forward to a sugarcane farm design using the observer block in the future as well, as well as some large tower tileable designs. So as always, smash that like if you enjoyed the episode to help others like yourself who might enjoy it find the content. And if you're new and you haven't already, hit subscribe for more, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.